Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of how to blender series. Today we'll be going over the texture painting in blender and for that I'm going to use my laser here. You can use any other object but first your object needs to be at least a bit prepared so a hard surface object or an organic object you need to have it unwrapped so you can just manually UV unwrap just as I have done for my lizard or just automatically make a UV unwrap and if you want to know more about those topics feel free to check out my YouTube channel there we have other informative videos it will help you believe me and of course you can see my lizard is also retopologized the lower amount of vertices we have the less it will lag so retopology is also recommended and once you have the model that you're ready to texture we want, we want to click on it and actually take it to the shading tab and down here I'm going to press shift A to add an image texture so I want to type in image texture and it is the same thing as my base color here just ignore that these things is called image texture and this base color because now I have two of those I'm just going to delay this one and what we want to do is click on new here we are going to be given the option to rename our layer and what we are doing is basically adding a layer on top of the lizard which will carry the paint we actually put on him so that is how we are going to be able to paint him we're just basically going to wrap him into paper canvas in other words he will become our canvas on which we can paint i'll call this for one lizard Call it however you want, so just remember the name. And now here we have the resolution. At the default value, it is set to 1K. We can just change it by clicking, in other words, holding the mouse button and then dragging quickly down. And now I can edit simultaneous to both numbers. If you're struggling a bit, you can just click here and edit them at one time, but we can do it like this. And if you want to change the resolution, for, for example, from 1K to 2K, I can just add this multiply button here and type in 2. Now our texture is 2K. If I want to make it lower, I can just add this slash button and divide it by 2. Now it is back at 1K. Let me just put it at 2K. So the thing is, the higher you go with the resolution, of course, the better the texture will be. It will be much more detailed and you will not see as many pixels. But the thing is, the higher the resolution, the more it is going to lag when you paint on it, especially if you paint on a big surface. But you know what? I will put it at 2K, it will be fine, and leave everything else as it is. Now, once we do that, I'm just going to grab this color here and put it into base color. And now, he's back in black, like this. Yes, this is the color we created and now we want to go to the texture paint here and you can see we cannot see our texture it is because we need to switch the preview mode so now we are in the solid view we want to switch to the material preview you can see now we have the black color and here you can see i'm also not having the right canvas you can see this is wizard low matte height in other words if you have multiple objects in your scene you need to navigate through them so this one is called color one lizard i'm going to select it and now this is good you can see here i have the circle in other words my brush of course i can paint on our wizard like this but the reason i'm not painting currently is because here we have the color one lizard selected but we also need to select it here and you can see if I click on this, now I will be drawing on him. And as I draw on him, you can see the color also appears here. The good thing is if I want, I can also color him from this direction. And you can see, yes, the color is here and here. Let me just undo that. The reason why our wizard here is not visible, because this is actually a UV map. But because he is black and the background is black, we cannot see the UVs. Let me just do this real quick. Okay, now you can see the islands. And I can also paint it here. And you can see the paint appears here. This is pretty nicely. Now, of course, we have some different brushes. 
we can configure the first one is the draw brush of course with it we draw the core and you can see up here we have two cores the one we actually have the pinkish one and we also have this secondary core for now which is black so i can change it into any other color for example change this into yellow change this into pink and i can actually swap between those two cores for example if you know you're going to use two of the cores very often you just want to swap between them so now i'm drawing green and when i press x on my keyboard now I'm just going to be drawing pink. So X to just switch between colors. Like this. Some other brushes we have is one of them being the soften brush. So what soften brush does, it blurs the colors that we put here. Especially it is nice to see when you have multiple colors together. So it's going to blur them. You can see the effect is pretty lightly here. What I can also do is just blur directly here. And you can see the difference it creates. Like this. Let me undo that. The other brush, not to be confused with the soften, is the smear brush. Imagine you have a canvas and you have acrylic paint on that canvas. And the paint hasn't dried up yet, but you just want to touch the picture. So you grab your finger and then you just swipe it like this. You can see the paint just gets swiped into that direction. In other words, you smudge it. That is what the smear brush does, unlike the soften brush that just blurs everything together. The brush underneath them is a clone brush. It's pretty interesting, so we actually use the 3D cursor to sample a color. For example, I can just hold shift, then right click to place the cursor wherever I want. So shift and right click. For example, I want to sample this part here. And then when I draw here, you can see it copies the same pattern and the same color onto the other part of the mesh. Like this. And the other brush, which is quite useful. So, of course, you can just make the brush very big to color your whole object. But I do not recommend doing that because it will cause so much lag. So, instead, you want to, for example, color your wizard green. I would be actually surprised if some of you are also coloring a lizard along with me. Like, if you're actually coloring a lizard, feel free to just tell me in the comments, like, I'm coloring a lizard! Yay, lizard gang! Yes, here we can just set the color. And then when I click, you can see now he is green. Like this. It's pretty nice. Let me just zoom out of this. So it does not explode into your face. And the last one is the mask one. So the mask is pretty interesting. So when you select the mask, you want to scroll down here. Here we have the masking option. And we have the cavity and the stencil mask. We want to enable the stencil mask. And then click here on the drop down icon. So we will create a separate layer which will act like a mask. Let me just try to illustrate it for you. You have a canvas and of course you're painting on the canvas but you do not want to paint the edges of the canvas for example with blue because you want to paint them yellow a bit later so what you're going to do is you will grab a duct tape and put it around the edge of the paint and of course you're going to paint the paint is going to be all over the place but once you peel off the duct tape that spot will remain unaffected so there will be no color there this acts very similarly so first i want to click on new and just click ok now i'm going to paint the mask around the area for example I'll paint it on his belly of course we can change the display color this is just for us to see what we are doing this i'll just paint it fast like this and then now I'm just going to grab a draw brush and let me just paint some yellow. You can see my mouse is just going over the stencil, over this pinkish color. And once I'm done painting, I want to remove the mask. I can go up here to mask again, here. And what I can do is just press X. You can see this area remains unaffected. 
Literally, where I draw the mask, nothing happened, nothing changed. And it's pretty amazing, if you ask me. And some other things, of course, the texture painting offers. It's, of course, this symmetry. So if you want to symmetrize on the x-axis, like it is doing now currently, you can here. So you can just symmetrize on the x, y, and z simultaneously. Or just on the z, just on the y, and just on the x. Of course, you can just also go up here. It does basically the same thing. We also, if I switch to the draw brush, you can see up here we have the strength, radius, other words, things that are similar to the sculpting mode. The only difference is this blend here, which is currently at mix. So if you know any like 2D editing softwares, or I mean, softwares like Photoshop, PixArt, you know they have blend modes for different pictures. And it is a blend mode which will actually determine the relationship between like the colors you have. For example, draw one color on top of another, how it's going to mix and how it's going to react. But I actually like to keep it on mix. If it does not work on mix, I will just switch to add or overlay. But in the meantime, there is not much difference between all of those two. Some will actually make it lighter, some will make it darker. For example, lighten and screen will make your colors brighter. Add an overlay or multiply will make them darker. And I actually hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new, had some fun. Well, our wizard, you can see, well, he got some colors. Of course, he'll be much more pretty when I get him done. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please feel free to share, like, subscribe and comment for more content. So, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.